This has been by far the most anticipated video on my channel for months now. So we're just gonna cut right to it. This is step-by-step -step how to start investing in the stock market in just a few minutes. Now to start off with, you are obviously here for a reason. Maybe it's to learn, maybe it's to make some money, maybe it's even to save for retirement. But why would you even want to invest to begin with? Well, if you've studied economics, you know there's this thing called inflation. And generally speaking, it's around 2 to 3% every single year. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. But basically what this means is that stuff costs around 2 to 3% more every single year. For example, when we look at this candy bar in say the 1970s, it may have costed you around 10 cents. But now in this year, it costs you up to $2 for that same candy bar. This is a result of inflation. And because of this, if you have say $1,000, and you just put that thousand dollars into a closet for 10 years in 10 years that thousand dollars still may be a thousand dollars but it won't be worth that much because everything is so much more expensive now if all of your money is in a savings account it may be gaining say 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 percent interest every year but because inflation is at two to three percent every year you're still losing money so how do we stop your money from losing its value well investing has been proven to have an average return of between six to 7% every single year. And that puts you way above that 2 to 3% that inflation rises every single year. Now, to explain investing to you, the first thing I need to talk about is what a stock is. And the most basic way I can explain this to you is say there's a giant pie of any company. It could be any company, Apple, Tesla, Google, Amazon, it doesn't matter, any company. When you buy a stock or a share of that company, what you're really doing is buying a small little sliver of that company or the pie in this case. And when that company is worth more and it grows or the pie's value is worth more, your share grows as well and you make money. Now, if investing in these stocks is so great and you can make money off of doing this, how do you buy shares of a company? Well, this is where it gets just a little bit complicated because you can't just go on tesla.com and you know buy shares of Tesla right then and there. You have to go through what's called a stock broker. Now, back in the day, a stock broker would be a physical person who was sitting at a desk or you know on a computer and you'd have to call him and be like, hey Bob, I wanna place an order to buy some shares of Microsoft. And then he would type some fancy stuff on his computer or place a paper order and now you would own some Microsoft. Thankfully, these days though, you don't really have to talk to Bob anymore because we have loads and loads of online brokers. So now you can create an account through an online broker and then go buy stocks and shares of tons of different companies. Now in every country, it's a little bit different because there's a bunch of different rules and regulations, but I personally recommend using Fidelity and Vanguard to start with. They're both great. But before you go and open up an account with Fidelity, we need to understand a few more things. Now, one of these things that you should know is a very, very common question that many people ask when they're first starting, which is basically, how do I decide which shares I should buy? And the easiest answer is that you don't wanna buy individual stocks. And this is simply because, well, it's a little bit risky. Like, okay, if you wanna go and buy Apple or Amazon stock in five to 10 years, yeah, it'll probably be around. Yeah, you probably would have made some money. But historically speaking, we see a ton of stocks that everybody starts to invest in that you have to invest in right now. And then within a couple of weeks, you know, you've lost half of your money and over time you lose pretty much all of it. I mean, we even see it today with companies like Bed Bath & Beyond and GameStop. So if you are going to buy individual stocks, you're automatically exposing yourself to more risk as a beginner because you don't have much experience. And I know it's super easy to go and say, well, Tesla grew 500% in the last few years and that means it should only keep going up and I'm gonna make money. And that's literally trying to predict the future and usually the past isn't any indicator of what's going to happen in the future. So this is why many financial experts recommend investing in what's called an index fund or an ETF. And this leads me to my next point, which is what the hell is an index fund? And to understand this, there's two parts we have to talk about. To begin with, the fund part. And this is basically where everyone pools their money and there is a fund manager who then invests this money. So I could be the fund manager and my fund is called the Banana Fund. And this fund is made up of a billion dollars from millions of different investors. And then I go and say, put 20% of this into Apple, 10% into Microsoft, 10% into Tesla, 10% into Costco, 10% into Amazon, and so on and so forth. But this is so that you you, as the investor, don't have to worry about any of this because you trust me, Eric, to manage your money here at the Banana Fund. 
And then as the fund does well, because the stocks are doing well, you get the returns of your investments. And then I take a one to 2% of that in a management fee. And this works out because I make a ton of money because everybody pooled their money together to invest in it. And then you don't have to worry about investing in stocks and you still get the returns of your investments. So that is the fund part, but then there's the index part. And this basically just refers to any stock market index. There is a absolute ton of them. There's the S&P 500, which refers to the 500 largest companies in the United States, the Dow Jones, the Nasdaq. Like I said, there are a ton of them. But when we look at what the S&P 500 is made up of, we see that it's made up of 7% of Apple, Microsoft makes up like 5%, Amazon makes up like 2.5%, and so on and so forth. And indexes such as the S&P 500 are generally an indicator or a sign of how the economy in that country is doing. For example, when we look at the S&P 500 on a max scale, we see that it started all the way back before even 1980, and since that time, this is what the stock market has been doing. As we can see, there is a general direction of going upwards over time, but we do see times such as during the recession of 2008 and in 2020, around when COVID first came, and even now with high inflation, the market does pull back quite a bit. So we now know what a fund and an index is, but when you combine these, you get a fund that automatically invests all of your money into a given index. And this is great because it diversifies your portfolio without you having to invest in a million different individual stocks. So we now know what stocks to invest in by diverting over to investing in ETFs and index funds instead of individual stocks. But the next question that usually follows this is, isn't investing risky? And it usually goes something like this. Well, my uncle Bob invested in the stock market and he lost $20,000. So my dad said that we shouldn't invest in the stock market and I shouldn't invest in real estate or bonds because that's safe. And this is usually what I hear from people. And then of course there's the added anxiety of losing money. But what I'm about to say is a big one here. And I wanna break this belief for you, okay? So think about this one. You don't lose money unless you buy something for a certain amount of money and then you sell it for less. So that means if you go and buy a house for a million dollars and then the prices plummet all of a sudden, everybody panics and you sell your house for $800,000, that is a loss. But then it's say if you held for two more months and the price goes back up and it's now 1.1 million, because you waited two months, you now have wiped out all of your losses and you made some money. And this happens with stocks too. And the prime example of this would have been if I wanted to go and buy Apple in early 2020. It was trading around $80. Then only within a few months, it crashed down to $60. Now you could have sold because you were scared it was going to go lower. A lot of people do that. But if you had just held on for a few months more, it was trading over $100. And this is the case for almost every single stock on a long enough scale. Stocks almost always go back up long term speaking. Not to mention that if every single stock in your ETF that you're investing in just magically crashed overnight, the dollar would be worthless and you probably have bigger problems than losing some money in an ETF that you're invested in. But what I'm touching on here is the concept of risk tolerance. Some people have a really high risk tolerance, some people have a lower risk tolerance for the ups and downs and volatility of the market. But if you're not able to sleep at night with what you're invested in, you're probably invested in something too risky. But I wouldn't generally worry about risk too much. But if you're watching this video, then when should you get started with investing? Because you could be 13, you could be 18, you could be 30, it doesn't matter, you could be interested in investing, right? And I think every single financial advisor will agree with me when I say the sooner you get started with investing, the better, regardless of how old you are. There are three little caveats though before you start investing. Firstly, make sure all bad debt is paid off. This includes credit card debt as well. And this is because as much as gains compound, so do losses. Secondly, make sure you have an emergency fund in case anything happens, such as another lockdown, you lose your job, you land yourself in the hospital, anything like that. And if you don't have an emergency fund, I highly recommend before investing that you will have one ready to go. God forbid anything ever happens. And the last thing is that you don't want to put any money into investments that you might need in the near future. This includes buying a house where you need a down payment. There's no guarantee that your investments will be the same amount in, you know, a year or two. So make sure you lay out your finances for the next few years before you start investing too much. 
Now, one of the last questions I usually get about starting to invest is how much money should I start with? Especially because many of my viewers are new to investing. They say, well, I don't have a lot of money to invest and that's perfectly okay. There are many websites and brokerages out there that allow you to start investing with only five or $10. And it's even better to start with smaller amounts and work your way up over time. So really, I can't stress this enough. There's no amount too small to start investing. Everyone is different. It's just based upon your own situation. Now the last point is okay, you're ready. You know all of this, you have $100, you're ready to go and invest. Now the answer is to find an online broker. And this is going to vary massively depending on where you live because they all have to follow a million different laws and regulations. It's a pain in the neck, but I personally, like I said before, recommend using Fidelity and Vanguard. They're both super easy to start with, but literally just depending on wherever you live, just Google like best online broker Canada or whatever country you're in and you can read some reviews and do some research. But the things that you are looking for is that number one, you have the ability to invest in index funds and ETFs. Most do, but just make sure because as we stated before, this is definitely the best way to get started. And then secondly, try and find one with the lowest fees possible. One with a really small percentage around 0.25% or so is usually a good one. But again, do your own research. Then once you open up your account and verify your identity, jump through a couple hoops and stuff, which may take a few days depending on what the regulations, where you live, all that good stuff. My advice to everyone is just to invest regularly. Do what's called dollar cost averaging. Just invest into a bunch of different stuff on like a monthly basis or a weekly basis. Just do that. Once you do that, set it and forget it. That's like what it's called. Don't look at your portfolio. Don't worry about it. And then your money will magically grow over time. One last little thing I have to mention though is that if you are under 18, you're gonna go and have to open up what's called a custodial account with a parent or guardian. This won't take too long either. And it's a really great way to get started with investing. Now, obviously there's loads more to say about investing in everything, but I hope this was a good introductory video to getting started with investing. If you have any questions or anything about investing or money even, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'll be responding to you guys, all right? And on top of this, I made a video earlier this month about the first step to becoming a millionaire. So with that video right here, along with this one, you'll be setting yourself up to become financially free. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.